guys welcome back to hands-on channel I wanted to uh, share this with you I've done a few modifications to this little table saw here and made a couple of different sleds for it that have just really improved the overall usability of this thing uh, it's just a little inexpensive contractor grade table saw uh, it was actually given to me uh, by a neighbor so I'm grateful for for the guy giving the thing to me uh, but at the same time it has a lot of shortcomings it's just not very uh, you know, repeatability is what you want to be able to do when you're doing any kind of woodworking. You want to be able to repeat the same thing over and over and make, you know, if you're making cabinet doors or something like that, you need to be able to uh, make certain cuts safely. And there's a lot of things that, uh, especially on finer detail work, where these contractor saws tend to fall short. Uh, one of the most obvious things up front on most of these saws is going to be the insert here right around the blade, the blade insert. Uh, on this saw, it's a metal one, and it only it doesn't actually go all the way around the thing. Uh, and I've had to, a couple of different issues with it. Earlier I was cutting and a board actually hung up on the back groove back there, uh, right here in that area. Uh, and basically caused me to make a bad cut. You know, if I was doing fine woodworking at the time, then that would have ruined that board. Uh, or I'd had to do some extra cleanup work on it, you know, some filing work, stuff like that, or, uh, or uh, you know, work with the plane. Uh, but anyways, back to this little saw here, you know, it's great for just an entry-level guy getting into it, which is what it is, entry-level saw. It's a 10-inch uh, Craftsman, 2.5 amp model. Everything that comes with, with this saw is, you know, the cheap stuff, basically. Uh, here's an example. It came with this little miter gauge miter slider uh, that has this little t-track in it i don't know if you'll be able to see the shape of that but it's actually a t-shape you look at it down on the end it's probably out of focus there but uh, this is one little mod i did this afternoon because i was tired of of you know getting my fingers that close to the blade not being able to have a nice uh, flat solid purchase on the on the wood piece so now i'm able to have a piece in there that's much taller i've got something firm to grab onto the thing with uh, and it works out great. Uh, so if you're trying to do uh, more precise cuts, now you can see there are grooves in that, uh, but you could go through there with a sander or with a plane or with a chisel and clean that up. No problem. That would be, you know, I didn't go very deep in the thing. It was just for demonstration, but that could be a half lap or that could be a rabbit on the end of a you know, on the end of a shelf or something like that, or, uh, you know, just lots of different uses. Uh, so uh, that's what we're working on today is just doing some little mods and tweaks on this saw. Uh, but back to this, this piece here and with the T-track. Originally, this saw had some little protrusions that stuck out here. Uh, and I took a file and a Dremel tool and cleaned every one of those off so that instead of this thing locking in in downward position, now I can pick it up any, anywhere oriented on the saw face, I can pick it up out of there. Before, you had to slide it in like this and it was locked in underneath those little tabs. Uh, and that may be great if you're just gonna use that miter and that's all you're gonna use, but I was having a problem finding other things that would fit in that slot and work with, that, with those tabs sticking out there. So what I came up with after I ground that off was I just took some uh, regular wood strips, glued them together, clamped them, and was able to make a little miter sled for the thing uh, so I can make picture frames or if I'm, maybe I'm doing uh, work interior work in, on the house and I need some new trim pieces, I can cut those 45s perfectly. Don't have to be worried about that. Uh, and that's fairly easy to make. You can see I just use scrap boards to throw that together, but that's a great little tool if you don't have a miter saw. Of course, a miter saw is superior, but it works to get you by. And another thing, this kind of uh, takes care of the problem of the not having a zero clearance uh, blade insert. I made this unit here, and the way I made it was it actually just hooks on on the ends of the saw here. It's a nice flat surface down here on the ends. And I'm able to use that to hold this firm enough. I mean, there may be, you know, a 64th of racking in there, but I, I can make perfectly straight 
90 degree cuts with this sled every single time and I love that. It's real easy. Uh, but this is one of the first and best things I've made with this thing because you can put a stop in here, you know, clamp in a stop and then I think you get the idea. I don't want to get my camera too dusty with all the sawdust, but it makes perfect 90 degree cuts. Uh, and you could actually set up other jigs in here too, along with it, where you could, you know, fix up a 45 on the top of this sled if you wanted to. Uh, but I can make them just as thin as I need them all day long, even thinner than that. But I was just trying to give you an example there. Uh, but the latest, greatest thing. And one of the things that's one of the biggest shortcomings of these type of contractor saws is the original fence system that was on here. Uh, I fought and fought with it. I couldn't stand it. Couldn't do a lot of jobs because of this fence. So I found a piece of uh, solid board. I thought it was MDF, but after I cut in it, I could tell it's solid grain board, probably pine or poplar or something like that. But it's nice and straight and it's uh, coated or it's covered with some uh, some kind of laminate. I don't know what it is, but obviously it was a desk or a shelf or something at one time. But now, uh, and it took me a while to get this thing to where it'll read dead parallel with the blade every time. And even then, I always check it if I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of cuts. But now I've got a system where I've got a taller fence, uh, and also I can clamp things on to this fence, uh, like stops and things like that. At the same time, I made that. I saved all the scrap pieces and I made this little thing. It's real simple, just screwed together, didn't even use any glue. And I, when I assembled this thing on the rail, on the uh, fence, I stuck a piece of folded over paper in between here so that I'd have just enough clearance so that it would slide back and forth like this. And the idea here is that say I want to have to find a longer board here. Uh, say I want to make a cut like this. Rather than making multiple passes, I could clamp this in, adjust my blade to the right height, like, you know, let's say there. And I could clamp this all down, orient my fence in the right position, wherever I want the cut, and Now I would still clamp this, and this kind of bypasses the fact that I don't have the zero clearance fence as long as I'm willing to clamp it like this. Let's just try that. We're all clamped down, safety glasses on. <laughs> Pretty decent. I mean, it's usable, and again, I could I could clean that out and make it perfectly square, either with a router or with a, uh, uh, or I could just reorient and do the other cut this way. In fact, let's try that. That may be the better way of going. I'm going to back it out a little bit because I went over halfway through. I'm going to line this up where I want my where I want the cut. Oh, and if you push this forward, that helps you to square the square the fence up a lot better on these cheaper saws. Okay, so we're going to make a cut there. And again, I'm just trying to square this up, get it on the flat part of the table here, square it up. Tightened it down pretty good. I don't want it going anywhere. Mm -hmm. 
essentially just cut two grooves in that. Now I could, I could go back through and clean that out and just make it a one big dado in there. Or what I'm going to do now is set up this other, this miter gauge. I'm going to set this up so that I can just take these off. Just my blade down. That should be perfect. Now again, I didn't do any measuring or anything. It was just to prove the concept that you can do this. Uh, I could clean this up with a with a chisel or a plane. Uh, just leave yourself plenty of uh, you know plenty of room for error, and you have to practice up till you get decent at it. But you can make some pretty nice tenons. And with the uh, depending on the way you're going, you could do half laps with it. So yeah, there's a lot of uh, a lot of possibilities with one of these contractor grade saws. Don't underestimate them. You can get them fairly cheap on Craigslist, or maybe even get a neighbor to give you one. So, <laughs> all right, guys, I think I covered everything. So I appreciate you stopping by. If this helped you out, hit the thumbs up. And until then, we'll see you next time.